America's athletes came together to pay tribute to Miami Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez Sunday after his life was cut short in a tragic boating accident in Florida. Baseball and football teams alike held moments of silence for the Cuban-born 24-year-old, who died after a boat he was on struck a Miami Bay jetty at high speed and overturned at around 3.30 am. But few were as moved as his own team. Marlins manager Dan Jennings welled up as he recalled, When you watch kids play Little League or something like that, that's the joy Jose played with and the passion he felt while playing. Grieving, Miami Marlins player D. Gordon, pictured, at the Marlins mound, was among the hundreds of players grieving over the loss of Jose Fernandez, the 24-year-old star pitcher broken up, the team were moved by the loss of Fernandez, with both President David Sampson head in hands, and manager Dan Jennings, bottom right, crying at a press conference killed, Jose Fernandez was killed around 3.30 am Sunday morning after a boat collided with rocks on Miami Beach overturned, the boat overturned in the crash at South Point Park Piers jetty killing Fernandez and at least two other men. The others have not yet been identified there was joy with him when he played, Jennings said breaking off for several seconds as the emotion engulfed him. And when he pitched, and I think that's what the guys would say too. David Samson, president of the Marlins, said Fernandez, who defected from Cuba aged just 15, was a model for Cuban Americans, for those who need to work harder than most for freedom. He was audibly emotional as he said fans and players could pay tribute to the star by doing what's right, no matter what the obstacles are. Whether they are political or social or athletic, you go right through them, and that's what he did. He added that Fernandez would never be forgotten by the team. You just see that there is not one player missing right now. The entire team has stayed, he said. And and we just want to say to his family, if they were listening, that this is not just about today or tomorrow. Jose is a member of this family for all time. He and the other members visibly broke down crying later in the conference. At the Marlins ground, the mound was painted with the number 16 and had a single baseball cap placed above it. The team's Sunday game against the Braves had been cancelled. Teammate D. Gordon was pictured crouching pensively by the mound, lost in thought for his friend. At one point he clutched his head in grief. Tributes also came in from other teams. At the Mets stadium. Jonas Cespedes, who, like Fernandez, is Cuban, and Josh Smoker hung up a Mets shirt with Fernandez's name on it, in tribute to the fallen star. And David Ortiz of the Boston Red Sox requested that they cancel his retirement ceremony prior to a game with the Tampa Bay Rays in favor of a moment of silence. Ortiz seemed particularly moved as it was observed. The Mets manager, Terry Collins, dedicated almost all of his pre-game conference to remembering Fernandez, describing him as not only one of the greatest pitchers in the modern game, but one of the finest young men you'll ever meet. Everybody loved him. If you ever watched him when he walked on the field a lot of times before a game pitching staffs are out early throwing and stuff and there isn't a guy he doesn't stop and say hi to on the other team. He added, I wish more guys were like that and more guys really had fun like he did playing the game. A Rays fan could be seen holding up a placard dedicated to Fernandez during the game. As per Ortiz's request, the Mets and Philadelphia Phillies held a moment's silence before their game Sunday. So did the Red Sox and Tampa Bay Rays, with Ortiz seeming especially moved by the loss of his friend. And silent memorials were held before numerous games Sunday including the Milwaukee Brewers vs. Cincinnati Reds, and Cleveland Indians vs. Chicago White Sox outside baseball, the Miami Dolphins will also hold a moment of silence before their game in Miami Gardens on Sunday afternoon. As news about Fernandez's death spread, Twitter filled with eulogies, memories and condolences. Please pray for Fernandez's family today. Absolutely sickening news wrote Boston Red Sox infielder Travis Shaw. Worst news to wake up to. Ortiz, Shaw's teammate, echoed those thoughts, I don't have the words to describe the pain feel for the loss of my friend Jose. Goodbye, my friend.
He repeated the tweet in Spanish. I am so sick right now as I wake up to hear this terrible news, tweeted Justin Reno, who was on the Marlins with Fernandez in 2013. Jose you will be missed by so many and I will never forget you as a teammate's Seal Poog of the LA Dodgers, who, like Fernandez, is Cuban, wrote, Hermano, brother, wherever you are, you know how much I loved you. Sin Palabras, speechless. My heart is with the families. The team said in a statement, the Miami Marlins organization is devastated by the tragic loss of Jose Fernandez. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family at this very difficult time. Fernandez's body was found after Miami-Dade Fire Rescue were called out to Miami Beach. A 32-foot boat had collided with the rock jetty at South Point Park Pier and overturned. The investigation has been handed over to Miami-Dade Police and, because the boat hit a jetty, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, FWC, it does appear that speed was involved due to the impact and the severity of it, Lorenzo Velos of the FWC told CBS. The boat seemed to be coming at full speed when they encountered the jetty, and the accident happened, he added. A police spokesman said later Sunday that the rocks were hard to see at night, and while the boat had been used in the area it was possible the driver had sailed off course without realizing. At least two other people, both men in their mid-twenties, were killed in the accident. They have yet to be identified pending family notification. The owner of the boat was very well connected with several Marlins players, Velos said. Two bodies were found under the boat and one was found in shallow water. None were wearing life jackets, but Fernandez was said to have died due to impact, not drowning, according to an early report. The investigation is ongoing, with toxicology reports yet to be performed, although neither drugs nor alcohol are believed to be factors at this stage. Fernandez was believed to be dating a woman named Carla Mendoza at the time of his death. She was not in the boat when it crashed. A post made five days before Fernandez's death on his official Instagram account appears to show a pregnant woman on a beach. I'm so glad you came into my life, the caption text reads. I'm ready for where this journey is gonna take us together. Hash from the first the woman was identified as Mendoza by player wives. Mendoza had been seen kissing Fernandez on the pitch after the Marlins defeated the Atlanta Braves 12-11 on September 25, 2015. Fernandez's story is not just the story of a gifted sportsman, but also the story of the real American dream, fought for and won. He was born in Santa Clara, Cuba, in 1993. His father, Ramon Jimenez, defected to the U.S. in 2005 after 14 attempts. Fernandez tried to follow while just a teen, but was caught three times. On the third time he was thrown in jail with adults, in conditions he would later say were so unspeakable that he could not describe them in English. In 2007, at the age of 15, he, his sister and his mother made the treacherous crossing across to the USA once more. At one point his mother fell overboard due to turbulent water and he leaped into the water in order to rescue her. Thanks to his bravery, all three of them made the crossing alive, and he was able to settle down in Tampa, Florida. At first Fernandez said he felt lost in the U.S., and preferred jail in Cuba. At least in jail I could defend myself, he told the Miami Herald. But here I felt so helpless. Overwhelmed. I've never felt anything worse than my first few months here. Jail felt better than that, and I was in with a guy who killed seven people. But Fernandez stayed strong, and, inspired by his baseball freak grandmother, see Fernandez's moving reunion below, and with the help of a coach in Florida who trained some of Cuba's top pitchers, got into baseball. His skill and speed made him a sensation and he graduated to the MLB through the Marlins in 2013. He became a U.S. citizen last year, but never forgot the journey he had taken. David Samson, president of the Marlins, was visibly moved as he recalled to reporters at a press conference how Fernandez had once told him, You were born into freedom, you don't understand freedom really. Freedom, Fernandez played baseball at his high school in Tampa, Florida 
and went on to become a Rookie of the Year and two-time All-Star. He became a U.S. citizen in 2015. Fernandez, who entered MLB in 2013, had been earmarked as one to watch thanks to a 100 miles per hour fastball. It was a stunning debut year, he made it as an all-star, was in the game's top 10 pitchers and was picked as Rookie of the Year. He was the first pitcher in the modern era to win his first 17 career home decisions, and went 24-1 in his first 25 home decisions. He also made his second All-Star appearance in the 2016 rankings, and went 38-17 in over the course of his four seasons with the Marlins. Fernandez had been due to play Monday, having been benched for Sunday's ultimately cancelled game after Adam Conley returned from the disabled list. Fernandez was born in Cuba, and attempted to flee to America three times to join his father, who defected in 2005. He finally made it to the U.S. in 2007 when he was 15, along with his mother and sister. But that meant leaving his beloved grandmother, Olga, whom he described as the love of my life. My everything. Fernandez called the elderly woman regularly telling her about his Florida high school and his developing career as a baseball player, something he picked up off the woman, whom he called a baseball freak. But the pair weren't able to meet for five long years, until Olga made a surprise appearance in America in November 2013. Hernandez, then 21, was in an interview with MLB Productions when Olga walked into the room, leaving him speechless. Out of nowhere, the pitcher said. I have no idea how it happened. The surprise was cooked up by Marlins owner Jeffrey Loria, who spearheaded an attempt to get the elderly woman out to see her grandson, who had just entered MLB and was on his way to being picked as Rookie of the Year. Permission was granted by the Cuban government, and she made her way over to see her beloved grandson. But she was shocked by how much the 15-year-old had grown, turning into a 230 pounds man. My little boy, my love, he is a man now, she said. He'll always be little to me, but I couldn't even get my arms around him to hug him now, who's so big.